Our next guest probably needs no introduction, but I'm going to give him one anyway. Last year, he became the first candidate since 1850 to defeat a sitting governor in North Carolina by narrowly beat out Pat McCrory by about 10,000 votes. We like to think we had a hand in, this vic in that victory. He was endorsed by Impact, and our members fought hard for him. We knocked, out, we knocked on more than 6,000 doors and made 12,000 phone calls. Surely that wasn't enough to put him over the top. He had a long career in public service, most of it as state employee himself. Before becoming governor, he was North Carolina Attorney General for 15 years and served in both the House and Senate before that. One of our first things he did as governor was restore the scenic access to agencies under the authority. <laughs> to make it possible for all, of us, for all of you to come to this convention once again, Plus, he's a Nash County boy like me. He and I grew up about five miles apart, so I know he's, in good, he's good people. Please join me in welcoming our governor, Roy Cooper, to the stage. To the stage. Oh, wow. I Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so very much. You know, When I come to this convention to see you, I think of one word, grateful. I am so grateful to you public servants, those of you who give your lives in service to other people. Thank you for that. I am so grateful. I'm grateful to my parents, Stanley growing up in Nash County, thank you for that great introduction. Grateful for the values that they gave to me. Grateful for my public education here in North Carolina. And I wanna just thank you. And when we talk about our state employees, our public servants, probably few examples better illustrate that than when our state is under a threat of disaster. I just got back from Raleigh and I'll, hit, I'll be heading back just as soon as I speak to you. I've been at emergency management and we know that Hurricane Irma is bearing down on the United States. And I will say this, our thoughts and our prayers are with the people who have been devastated by Hurricane Harvey in Texas and Louisiana. Our thoughts and prayers are with the people who are already picking up the pieces of their lives and who have lost loved ones who live down in the Caribbean. And we know that our neighbors to the south in Florida and Georgia will see impacts from this storm. And we know that although the storm is tacking west, that most likely North Carolina will feel some effects of this, and it will be more in western North Carolina. And we know that people in western North Carolina aren't used to hurricanes and, and don't get them very much, so there is danger of mudslides, there's danger of damaging wind, a lot of rain and, and flooding. And whenever that kind of thing happens in North Carolina. We know what happened with Hurricane Matthew a year ago. We still have a lot of work to do getting people back on their feet. But when disaster happens, we have state employees who are talented, who are tested, who are experienced, and we know that you will be there working long, working hard, doing everything that you can to pull together to help the people of our state. We have those of you who are in communications. We have those of you who are in rescue. 
We have those of you who are on road crews. We have those of you who are in the administration of process, those of you who are in facilities management or security or cleanup, all over state government. You are there to step up, to keep the people of North Carolina safe. You are there to be a friend to the people of North Carolina, and I am grateful for you. And another thing that you do each and every day you provide the services that sometimes a lot of people take for granted. They expect the things to happen that you make sure happen every day. And as governor of this state, I am so grateful. I want to say that I'm grateful to Impact. I'm grateful for your endorsement in the last campaign. You worked long, you worked hard. Thank you very much. I could not have gotten elected without you. You were strong, you were loud, you worked hard, you knocked on doors, you made phone calls, you made contributions. Thank you for that. And as I was campaigning, and since the day, that I took office, I've told you my vision for North Carolina. Everybody's got to have a mission statement. This is my mission statement. This is what I want. I want a North Carolina where people are better educated, where they're healthier, where they have more money in their pockets, and where they have the opportunities to live a more abundant, and purposeful life. That's what I want at the end of the day. And not only are you helping, did you help me win this election, but you are helping me achieve that vision for our state. And in order to achieve that vision, we got to have a strong employee workforce. And one of the things that creates a strong employee workforce is input. That's why I wanted Scenic back in our state agencies, back talking with managers, back talking with future members. Because you know what? When people join your organization, when employees and management talk, when people actually listen to each other, the taxpayers of North Carolina get a better work product. They get better employees and happier employees. So I want to make sure that you have that access and that we work together for the betterment of our state. And that's why I signed that executive order, one of the first things that I did as governor. I told you that that's what I was going to do, and I did. In order to have a strong workforce, we also need to protect the rights of employees and to make sure we have fair process in place to protect those rights. We also need a state workforce that looks like the people that it serves. I believe, I believe from the bottom of my heart that diversity makes us stronger. And that's why I have appointed the most diverse cabinet in North Carolina history. I believe it's also the best cabinet in North Carolina history. It was very easy to be diverse because we have so many talented people in this state from all works of life. And having a diverse workforce is critical. Now, it's also important that we have for our state employees better pay, better benefits, better retirement. And we won't attract good state employees to work for our state if we hurt retirement 
and if we hurt, health benefits. And we won't have better pay and benefits if the legislature continues to reduce the tax base that provides the help for better pay and better benefits. And let me tell you what I'm talking about. What we've seen over the last few years is tax breaks for corporations. We have seen tax breaks for the very wealthiest um, among us. But we haven't seen as big a tax breaks for those in the middle class and working North Carolinians. And what we've done is reduce the available funds that we can invest in our workforce. And I need you to help me get candidates running for the legislature and candidates who get elected to the legislature who believe in a strong employee, state employee workforce and who want to raise pay and have better benefits and better retirement for state employees. I need that help next year in this election. And I want to tell you that what we need to do is to make sure that we communicate, that we work hard. Some of you retired state employees out there, and maybe some of you active ones, but particularly those who are entering into retirement, and I've talked to some of you, that you may actually want to run for the legislature yourself. Think about doing that, because we need good people. We need those who have been in public service, those who understand that. I'll tell you another reason I'm grateful. We have so many talented state employees right here in this room. Many of you could have done other things. things. You could have worked for the private sector for better pay and better benefits. But many of you have said, no, what I want to do is to serve the public. I want to give back. I want to help the people of North Carolina. You have chosen to do that. And I want to tell you how grateful I am that you have made that choice. I see it every day in the people who are working in the various cabinet agencies, who are working in the governor's office. I see it as I go out and speak with people across North Carolina. I see it in our correction system. I see it in our health care system. I see it in our school system. I see state employees every day who go the extra mile. I get letters about you. I get letters about from people who say, I had a state employee help me the other day, and they went above and beyond the call of duty. I had someone telling me about a state employee who went and did an errand for them while they were trying to get off Ocracoke Island when the power was cut off. The state employee went out of their way to help this person, and they wrote me a letter. And I see it time and time and time again from people who say, I know you get a lot of people who gripe about things. Let me tell you about a state employee who helped me. Thank you for that. Because often you don't get the thanks. Often you don't have people come up to you and say, I'm grateful for what you do. Because a lot of what you do is what people expect. But people have to realize that having a good state workforce, state employees, requires an investment. It requires an investment of time and money and recruiting and making sure we do the right things to create an atmosphere for a good workforce for our state employees. You know, we are living in a time where we're probably more politically divided than we have ever been. And more than ever, we need leaders who truly want to bring us together leaders who can listen. One of the things that I advise people to do in order to help bridge the divide is take out the, to lunch somebody who believes politically the opposite of what you believe and listen to that person. 
Oftentimes we assume they're coming from another place that is not right and it may be things that you can do to pull them together and it may change your thinking about things just because you listen. And we get into our echo chambers with social media and listening to our own friends and we don't try to break out. This state, this country, we need healing. We need people who are going to work to bring us together. We need a strong employee, state employee workforce. And as governor of this state, I want to do that. But I need you. I need your help each and every day continuing to do your jobs. I need your voice. We need you in this next election in 2018. And I want to make sure that we have a North Carolina that works for everyone. I'm going to head back to Raleigh and we're going to work on our continued hurricane preparedness. Uh, when you go home this weekend, make sure that you and your family are prepared. Hope and pray that the storm doesn't strike North Carolina and that we don't feel the effects as much, but it pays for us to be ready. It's better for us to be ready than, than not. Thank you, state employees of North Carolina. Thank you, Scenic. Thank you so much for your support. Let's go work hard. Thank you very much. I appreciate it.